Welcome to RBCE's Threat Detection Project. This is the first week of our project, so we will take things a bit slow and steady. We will try our best to upload such presentations on a weekly basis and you will be informed well in advance. So let's begin. First, uh, let's go through what you will learn from this project, followed by the basics and the setup for the project and lastly what we intend to teach you and cover in the first week. So what you will learn first you will have a thorough understanding of networking by the end of this project. Second you will have a basic understanding of the protocols that run the internet. Hopefully, you'll be designing your own protocol someday. Lastly, you'll have a basic understanding about at least two application layer protocols. Basics. I hope everyone has gone through the OSI model, which consists of seven layers, the application presentation, Session, Transport, Network, Data Link and Physical which we generally remember as A, P, S, T and D, P. Now key things to remember here, not only for this project but for your external exams as well, is that the network layer always deals with IP addresses. That is host to host communication. It All it does is identify where your computer is based on the IP address and sends any requests or responses to that and so on. The transport layer on the other hand deals with a specific port number. Now each port is assigned or can be assigned to a process running on your system. For example you must have seen port 80 being used for HTTP traffic or 443 is the port number which deals with HTTPS traffic which is secure. Now these, traf these traffic numbers are given by standardized bodies but you can always change them. So the key thing to remember is that IP address is host to host, the port number is process to process. This slide must have been seen by you in class. If not, well, I'll explain it to you. There are two computers on a network. The one on the left side is the sender. The one on the right is the receiver. Now, the sender has generated a data unit, which is called D7. For networking, the addition of headers and trailers is very important because first the header tells the network what the data is, where it is uh, going, where it is needed, are there any restrictions on this kind of data and second while receiving the data these headers can be used to detect and correct any errors which may have occurred due to transmission or any other cause for example noise or distortion and so on so you have the data unit d7 to which the header h7 is attached at the application layer now this h7 plus d7 unit is encapsulated onto d6 that is D6, D6 is the combination of H7 and D7 that is at the presentation layer and the header for the presentation layer H6 is added and down it goes till the data link layer where a trailer is added along with the header of course. On the physical layer it is transformed into the binary format and sent via electromagnetic signals. On the receiver end on, on the other hand, yes, 
the UO. You have the header and the data, which is then unwrapped as you go up the layer. So you can see that as you go up the layer, the data is obtained by removing the headers. This is the conventional view of networking. This is how most network hardware works. But now, with the advances in network hardware, with uh, computational speeds, it is possible for me to directly extract this data unit, which has gone down the layer right here. I do not need to go up again to unwrap the data unit D7. Now this technique or these techniques rather is called deep packet inspection where I go deep without any computational overheads. It is not as bad as people think. Now let's move on to the next slide. Now this is going to be our setup for most of our projects. First you have five computers on the left hand side connected on an internal network. They are connected to a switch which basically works like most of your wireless routers. Imagine this client or this computer on the network VC1 trying to communicate with another computer VC2. So any data packets sent by VC1 will come to the switch then those packets will be routed to VC2 and so on with the other computers. To achieve deep packet inspection we will be using the concept of port mirroring where all kinds of data, all kinds of protocols, anything, any packet generated by any of these five computers will be duplicated and sent to the Monosex server. The Monosex server is a very sophisticated piece of hardware which performs the task of deep packet inspection. The Monosex server can work in two ways. The first method is the real-time method where as soon as any packets appear on the switch are passed on to the Monosex server and results about those packets, for example source IP, destination IP or any other metric which you are trying to calculate are returned in real-time. Here is where synchronization and to some extent concurrency is a big issue. The second method is the forensic method where any packets intercepted are stored in a particular file for later analysis. As of now, we will be using the forensic method of evaluation because that is one, it's easy to teach. Second, it's easy to configure the Monosex server for forensic use. Coming back to the results thrown by the Monosex server, the monitoring system will have all kinds of front-end technologies which can be used to display analytics about packets, for example, how many computers at this point of time are trying to access google.com. That is an analytic question. When passed to the Monex, Monosex server, it throws results back to you. Another use of the Monosex server is to apply filters. For example, if your computer is generating many useless packets, I can find that out through the Monosex server. I can find out if something is wrong with your computer and so on. 
if you are generating too much traffic maybe i can take action against you for example banning you from the network or adding extra rules to my network firewall these are just some of the methods which are used for analysis moving on you have the following objectives for week 1 you need to add to your unix knowledge we will help you along the way and trust us if you know unix you know more than anyone else second we intend to demonstrate inter process communication between two computers on a network the simplest program ever it's the equivalent to the hello world of inter process communication where one computer asks the other to display some text the computer sends the text to the first computer and the first computer displays the text on the screen saying yeah i got it third and the most important is for us to explain how the inter process communication model is used in networking we hope uh, we are able to do justice in the first week and we hope you have fun as well thank you